Hey, this is Daryl as a service at your service. I'm going to take a look at Microsoft Bookings today. I haven't set myself a page up yet. I thought I'd take yourself outside too so that it's um, different to my usual desktop environment. I'm experimenting a bit with different environments as I try and bring technology to you. So bear with me uh, as I experiment with this. I've got my laptop over here and I just wanted to try and use this space behind me as a way of just bringing some depth. So let's try it out. Over here with Microsoft Bookings, apparently it is a page that I can get to from my calendar. So I'm in Outlook.com or Outlook on the web. And there's a new option here to be able to edit or create a bookings page. Um, so I have clicked into it to see what it looked like, but I haven't really gone any further than that. And it's presenting with me with a page that I can set up as my bookings page. This is somewhere where I can invite people to book some time with me and I can set this up and brand it in all sorts of different ways. Um, I'm going to go in and let's say edit the banner and I can choose from a few of the banners that are available to me. At the moment as you see it's in preview so I can't just choose my own banner, my own branding. I've got to go with what is available here today. I will go with, I'm going to go with that desert. Uh, it has pulled through my profile picture, which is great. It means that if I'm going to be changing that picture, then it's uh, going to follow uh, whatever I'm using within my environment. So there's that consistent feeling of it. Uh, let's see, we've got um, other settings. Well, it, the bookings page is on, so let me create a... I think I'm going to start off with a private link to begin with. Um, so I've got to set up a meeting type. Now this is where you might um, set it up for a certain period of time or a certain type of meeting. It could be an intro meeting. So I'm going to say introductions, getting to know you. And as a category, I can set that up so that it also follows the, the categories within my calendar at Outlook. Now, this is kind of important because there are other places where I can use categories. Uh, we will be able to do something of a report uh, to show uh, the effectiveness of our meetings and that will follow our categories. So um, that could be important for internal purposes, like if you're going to get people to rate your meetings. But if I'm going to be creating one for external, then perhaps that's not such a big deal. Anyway, let's continue. So categories, I'm just going to stick with uh, no category for now. Um, give it a quick description, quick meeting to meet a new client or contact. Interesting. Okay, now location, it is going to default and always add a Teams meeting link, which is a good thing. This Teams meeting link means that I can invite people, of course, online. Uh, I might also set that location as my physical office so that we've always got an option to do that. In terms of location though, as I do that, um, I've got to... <laughs> I haven't turned on um, preferences for location, but it looks like I can choose a physical location and choose a building or an address, street address. I am going to stick with a 30 minute meeting. This is a good length of time to just meet people initially and then maybe bounce off from there um, where you might go. Um, and we also have to set up our office hours. Within my office hours here, let's have a look. Set up, see my regular meeting hours. Well, I think this is related to what we see within Outlook. I can set when I am available to take meetings. You see meeting hours there from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. So that's roughly a, a business day and it also picks those days of the week. So it is going to pick on that. But is there a way for me to also change this? Use my regular meeting hours or custom availability? This one could be good because maybe we just want to uh, I want to make myself available for meetings, but just in the morning, when I'm fresh, when I'm able to um, give my best and then use my afternoons to catch up with uh, people and follow-ups on meetings. So custom hours, let's have a look at our options. Um, we can say Monday through to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., so let's just change that. I'm going to bump that up to maybe 12.30 be good if I could just copy that all the way down 
So I'm just going to change two of them, but you get the idea. I could change for each day depending on a schedule that I might want to make myself available. And note too that I can make a certain day non-bookable. So I could also make Friday non-bookable so that I can just follow up on things and use Friday as my creation day. Uh, what other options do we have? Advanced options, buffer time, fantastic. So I want to be able to have some time to focus and uh, get myself into the mode of the meeting, read up a bit on, on the things that I, I might need to do to prepare and bring my best to the meeting. So buffer time, I'm going to set to being about 15 minutes. This means that when people go to book my time, that that time is going to be protected before my meeting and there's no way to book up a meeting um, immediately after another meeting. So I'm going to give my best and I'm also not going to run over, I'm going to have that buffer. I'll do a similar buffer time afterwards because it's good to be able to capture some notes afterwards when the thoughts are fresh and um, to be able to you know, better capture some of the follow-up actions. And minimum lead time, so that means that um, I think lead time is that you can't book it uh, up to an hour in advance. So um, let's say that there's about half an hour to go for the time slot that they're after, couldn't book that. And maximum lead time um, that's, oh, okay, so minimum lead time. I'd want to have at least eight hours. I wonder if there's a day there. Yeah, let's choose a day. So this means that you can't book me the same day, but I can get at least a day to think about things and prepare. And then maximum lead time being that up to 90 days. So that means that you can't book any further out from there. Um, I get to protect that. Right. Save those settings. Fantastic. Private meeting available. Uh, I guess we can go through a similar kind of pattern with public meetings. Uh, I won't make you uh, watch me do that. <laughs> but um, at the moment, there are no shared links available for me to put this into an email signature or share it with people. Um, I can copy a link, a single use link which is useful if you only want people to be able to book once in one time. Uh, and it's, it's a bit like protecting your calendar and making sure that they can only do it that once rather than a usable, usable thing. Okay, so copy that link. I can take that link and I can drop it into an email signature. Um, I'm also going to make this public. Right, so I can swap between public and private. Um, and that means now it's the same process, <laughs> I've proven that, I've saved myself some time. But it means that when people come to my bookings page, they'll be able to see that introduction time there. And that is about it. Is there anything here to... Nothing there to make it publish, that's cool. Can I add it to my email signature simply? Let's have a look. Create an edit signature. So this is drawing directly from the signature that I already have set up in Outlook on the web, which is cool. Um, I will say, include a link to my bookings page in my signature. What happens here? Book time with me. Can I change the size of this font? I'm not really keen on that size. Um, eight. Let's go with ten. Looks good. Don't know about color as well. But that's cool to see as an option. Nice and easy to set up. So, it looks like we've got our bookings page. Um, what would happen if I copy that link? And we'll drop that into a private browser session to see what other people see. Great big long link. Not the most attractive thing, but it takes you through. And here we go. Uh, sign in and continue as a guest. Or continue as a guest. We'll try as a guest. Pretty simple. I've chosen the meeting type, so if there were more types there, then I could choose from that. Um, I can see that it's Saturday today, um, and I've given myself at least a day's leeway, and that people can't book. Um, they can only book from Monday through to Thursday, so this is cool. And all of those times, they look a bit odd, don't they, because I've given that 15-minute buffer time, uh, so it means that it's almost on the hour, but it's... Yeah, protecting that time. So, seems to be kind of, can I say, particular, pedantic. Um, but that's cool. And what else have we got? 
we can set the time that uh, we are viewing that calendar in. And I, I suspect that it will be something that we see uh, come up anyway, that uh, depending on where you are in the world, it'll detect that. So that was a quick look at the bookings page, the setup. Look, I did it. Uh, maybe I'm late to the, the party here and that people have already done this before, um, but I thought I'd just take that through um, those steps with you, explore it and see what you think. So um, do you like the new format? I'm gonna try it a bit more, see if I can find some more interesting places to, to bring you out of the office and um, to other places where we can work. So this has been Daryl as a service at your service and we'll see you again. Bye for now.